Hello, dear creatures. It's Louise. Um, uh, I thought I would like to share an experiment with you. Um, and this experiment is about reading cards in a very intuitive way and trying to strip my mind um, from all <laughs> Uh, common um, symbols or references to gender or age or uh, historical figures or f whatever that we usually or that, that many of us usually read into those cards whether we follow a more hermetic or golden dawn system or way of thinking or a capital <laughs> capitalist wow uh a capitalist way of thinking um uh or yeah right away it's smith oriented or whatever I'm, I'm just trying to strip off all of those things which is impossible but okay i'll try to do it anyway and i thought this morning that i would try play with the cards in this really intuitive way. Um, I've been doing it a couple of weeks just with three cards readings and just trying it out and feeling, yeah, it was actually more fun and it it worked far better for my brain the way it works for the moment or these years, to be honest. Um, less locus, to be honest. I, I needed that. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to, to go for it. And I watched the uh, Terrology movie last night with Enrique Enriquez. And, um, well, that's... Uh, talking about that is for a whole new video. But but anyways, the, the result was that I felt brave this morning. And <laughs> I started putting out some cards. Um, and <clears throat> I used the, uh, the Madanyu deck and I use that quite a lot for the moment. Um, so I'm not going to work with pips. Um, I put those aside or the corks as well um, and just concentrating on the mages because they have such extremely exquisite um, talents for, um, for, for creating narratives and pictures, images, and, and stories. Um, so I'm going to put those away and um, just concentrate on the majors. And I'm going to show you now what I drew. And actually this just started as a, um, it's a three card reading. So I just did it like this, and then that, and that. And I, I had a question. I'm going to tell you what it was. Um, Without getting too personally, uh, or rather involving you too much in my private life, I just, I, I needed to ask myself, after a lot of ruminations, why it is so tough for me for the moment to get out into the world and, and start seeing people again, um, or in a new way, or whatever. I just felt that nothing was really going to... Uh, inspire me or whatever and I was like why am I so why am I so reluctant to get out into the world and not do as I usually did I used to have a lot of like social life and so many friends and and also really good friends and all that but the last couple of years I've changed my life completely I was forced to do that in many ways, and I also decided to do it in other ways. Um, so the question was, why is it to so tough for me to to go out? What is it that I'm afraid of, in other words? Because I feel like, mm, I'm not going to do that. Um, what is it that bothers me? And so I, I put those three cards, and I... I thought initially that I would just do a three card reading. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to check if you can actually see something in the uh, on your screens. Yeah, I think you can. I think you can actually <laughs> see something. Um, 
Okay. So I got the um, the Empress and um, no, I'm not going to tell you the name of the cards actually. I'm just going to tell you what I see. Okay. I see a tower, a building that's being demolished and I see people falling out of it and it's quite chaotic and you, two people are watching this scene or watching this happening and they are not doing anything, they're sitting quite comfortably in their chair or doing what they're doing in their everyday lives and um, just paying a little bit of notice but they're not really acting upon it, um, not seeming to be about to act upon it. And of course that sort of struck me as, you know, I feel that my life has tumbled down, you know, and maybe I feel that people are not really wanting to help me or wanting to be with me or wanting to get involved. Um, those were my initial thoughts, you know. Um, and then I thought, I need more cards. <laughs> and so I pulled more cards. <clears throat> and we have one up here, we have one down here. That's what I did in the next um, step. Um, I don't know if they should... I'm just going to check again if you can see anything. This is an experiment. <laughs> it's going to do like that, I think. Yeah. Whoop. Um, okay. So now we have a line here. And at first I was like, what the bloody heck? I mean, uh, what's the story here? And I was trying all kinds of things and, you know, um, so I started figuring out, I mean, hang on, those two dogs up here, I mean, there are also two people here, it's not just one person, it's not just me, that one or that one, or both, or, there are two people here, and, and then I sort of tried to look at this image and this image, and this image, as though it was like a cartoon movie. How did this one change into that one, and that one into this one? And if we do it that way, <clears throat> it feels as though, <laughs> it feels as though this creature, the sea creature, which nobody can see, is in the water, and it's silent and invisible. And it feels like this one is going up through the ground or up through the water, whichever you like. And what happens when that one goes upwards? First of all, it bumps into this, this moon or this fiery, fiery thing, fierce thing up here shining and, you know, glimmering and all that. So it bumps into it. And it, it, well, it becomes a tower. <laughs> it bumps into this this moon, and um, a lot of fire is going on. Then the, the the top of something falls falls off and is destroyed. And those two, maybe they used to be the dogs up here, and they're sort of just tossed around, you know, and just falling like, oh, on the ground, you know, they're, they're actually not falling out of the tower now. They were already on the ground, maybe those are their footprints, you know. Um, so the tower is sort of erupting everything and making everything a little bit chaotic and you see the water with the soil just f all around the tower in the air, you know, like... <laughs> um, <laughs> and... Um, and then down here, I mean, this happens quite quickly, doesn't it? It's like all of a sudden, and then, yeah, and then down here, let me finish this first. Um, down here, I thought, well, maybe that's a window, you know? Maybe that's one of those windows up here. And maybe there is somebody in that tower, um, although not having 
the top, you know, not being protected from the rain and all those things that you cannot control, but maybe being protected from other people's views or gazes, um, but still visible, which is the big change from this picture to this picture. This one is not heard of and not seen of. It's sort of hiding. Uh, it's, it's, it was a sea creature and it's a tower quite visible all of a sudden. Um, and then if you look into one of the windows, you can see, make a close up, you know, zoom in and you can see this woman dancing inside the tower, not caring a bit about being naked or maybe just, you know, because there's a breeze or some wind putting on a little towel or a little blanket not to feel too cold. But he's not really caring about being seen. Um, she's just dancing around and she's having quite a good time, it seems. <laughs> being on her own and outside the gaze or away from the gaze of others. Um, and so this crown um, becomes like a... a, a um, a very important person with a halo <laughs> and this this the flames becomes an eagle or a bird with wings of fire and the two guys here the two dudes become um, the um, become the um, the little Taurus down here the bull uh, or maybe just the Taurus, yeah, and the the um, the lion, Leo down here, and looking quite happy all of a sudden. Those two aren't they? I mean, it looks like it's it's sort of flirting in a way with the Taurus, and and this eagle up here is sort of talking with this other guy, and it feels like, okay, this is a very protected place. Um, And so if we look at this, in, in, in light of this, what I've been saying here, we can have a look at this row again, because it sort of changes my interpretation of what those two figures um, are doing, or how I interpret their, um, their doings. Um, because this is a really abrupt, uh, part of this this um, uh, movement. This is a, a very abrupt scene or a scenery with abrupt movement and they are actually looking at the back like well what the heck you know and they are they're not looking at something that has been going on for some time. This has just happened and they are quite stupefied in a way about it and um, because this is not the permanent phase, you know. They're not looking at me sort of being in for a couple of, this is not equivalent of a couple of years. This is equivalent of a moment in time. Um, and so my feelings, you know, the feeling I had that those people were just looking at and not really, really wanting to, or really being able to help me, whatever, or really being able to connect with me, that changes because what they're looking at is not me dancing around <laughs> in the tower. They're just seeing this this sudden shift and this this very um, um, unpredicted moment in time. Um, yeah, so I think I'll put out some more cards because I felt like that, and I remembered. One of the uh, spreads that I saw um, Benjamin do, and I think it was inspired from the... Uh... No, hang on, that was something else. Hang on, doesn't matter. Anyway, I put it up here, and I put it down here. Um, and... I put this one up here. So to close the... Uh the frame and then 
We have a lot of things going on all of a sudden. Can you still see what I'm doing? Let me just check. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> um, I'll just put it a bit further down. Because um, I really like all the details. This would usually freak me out. The thought of doing this would freak me out. You know, it's just too much information. But starting from the middle makes it really quite um, accessible <laughs> all of a sudden. Um, so anyways, um, let's start up here in this corner and look at what's going on, you know, and look at what's going on and here as well. Now all of a sudden we have so many ways of looking at this, um, this movie, <laughs> this narrative, this story. Um, where should I start? Uh, yeah. Um, so this judgment, um, let me just take this one, this one down here. That's what I did, wasn't it? Yeah, I just, I just went down actually. Uh, and if we look at this, mo uh, this uh, lady again, she's sitting there and she's resting and she's quite, I mean, she, she has a scepter and she has a shield and a crown and it, to me it reminds me of how um, how you can sit there and feel that you have done good or that you have done enough or that you feel stuck to be honest as well but I mean anyways you have your scepter your your gold and your shield for protection and your um, your steadiness of everyday life, okay? So, she's quite well off, you know? Maybe she used to, um, maybe she used to be in the middle of everything, you know? Maybe she used to be really amusing and playing her instruments really well, you know, and being the center of attention and, and, and just slowly the things changed as she was getting older, you know? Um, she was making people applaud, you know, and, and just feeling good and, you know, um, creating a good atmosphere and and now her trumpet has turned into a scepter and her flag has turned into a shield, which is not as um, creative as this, um, as in this card. So when you look at that, she feels lonely compared to up here and nobody's really looking at her anymore, right? And maybe she's just thinking about the others, you know, that just uh, run around having a good time and and just not really um, looking at her or thinking about her. She feels that yeah, she has to be very responsible and grown up and other people are just, you know, being silly and fooling around, not looking at her anymore. And that changed, again, my whole perspective on the way that, that of, on the way I look at her gaze upon what happened in my life or with my life, you know. I mean, um... Some of my friends might actually have grown bitter in their own lives and for sure I do know that some have and actually feeling lonely and feeling yeah, bitterness somehow and boredom and feeling that they are not of any use to anybody um, and feeling sort of stuck with the gold and the security, you know the golden bath tops <laughs> um, and on the other row over here you see like a development of a of a person or a person's life you know starting with having huge ideals about how things should be when you grow up um, and because yeah this is about growing up this middle row and so if we think of all the rows as sort of growing up there are many ways of growing up and and sometimes they interfere or mix you know they often do, but over here we have like a, ideals about how things should be and a very clear vision of how things should be. And um, then you step out of that throne and you 
go to the fields and you start working. <laughs> you start, you know, you get a job and you find out that you actually have to do quite a lot of trickster stuff or triggery or not trick or, or treat, but trick or cheat. <laughs> Um, in order to fit into our capitalist societies. I mean, I'm just going to put it as it is. Um, you're going to sell stuff, make stuff, eat stuff, and, and buy stuff, and uh, try to persuade people that this bag of Japanese silk or, you know, is really pretty and worth a lot of money, you know. Um, and you're just being all swallowed up by this... Uh, by this tre treadmill um, that most of us have gotten to know at some point of our life in our lives and some of us still are in um, and if you're not in it then maybe you're here <laughs> then maybe your life is in so-called ruins um, and so again that changes even more the way I look at the situation that I was in you know you're never alone, you're always amongst people. And looking at the power, the, the workings of power now in this ro uh, row has changed quite differently, or qu has changed quite a lot for me now that I'm looking at, at um, more cards. Um, I'm reading Camilla Elias's stuff for the moment as well, and, and she comes from a um an academic uh background and uh knows a lot about deconstructive um theories etc that i can i can sort of recognize it in her books so i i assume that 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 she's been reading a lot of the same stuff as i do and, and thereby also being very um into um the workings of power and the workings of power within ourselves and between us and within our societies and and all that so so in light of that I mean I might not be on top of the world but I'm not feeling stuck and I'm not feeling that I'm selling my soul I'm just ruined <laughs> everything has dissolved and in a way I am I have sort of stood up for myself in a way that caused a lot of change and movement around me and maybe people got hurt and all that and it wasn't because I wanted to hurt them I just had to get out of that lake I had to see I had to see something I had to broaden my point of view I had to broaden I had to see what people are actually doing and I had to see what I was actually doing and so in the very first moments that I saw those three cars I thought yeah that's me you know my life is ruined you know and people are not really necessarily wanting or being able to help me but looking at it now it's like yeah okay but but I'm not the one falling out of the windows nobody's falling out of any windows I just popped up you know and I'm I, a huge shift in, uh, entered in my life and <clears throat> and it doesn't feel comfortable and it doesn't feel secure and it doesn't feel uh, you know like long lasting or anything it's just like a very drastic thing you know and and, and there was a lot of um, chaos with no goal in my life it really looked like this for a long time like it was still, you know, raining with parts of the bricks and all that, you know. Um, so, again, this, those rows just changed my idea of what was going on with those two people uh, gazing at my ruin, <laughs> so to say. Um, and then if we look in the, at the middle... Callum again. I mean, no. Let's look at the the down the 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 um the one down here, because yeah, she was dancing, you know, in the window and just having a good time on her own in a way. Maybe not good time, but she was not 
working hard to be somebody, to have status, to have things, or to to um, take part actively in capitalist society. I was just on my own, but I was also very protected. And when I look at this one now, with those two cards surrounding it, I mean, it feels like I'm now walking out of a portal, like a doorway um, in this castle. And to my right, I mean, to this, to the, at the right side of this person, not at the right side of, of our view, but for this person, to my right, to her right, there is a, yeah, there's a garden, um, there are two people having fun and sort of enjoying each other and just, you know, patting each other's skull, shoulders or whatever it's called and just, yeah, looking very much alike, you know. Uh, maybe being a little naive. And that's not where I'm heading. Because I do identify with this figure in here. This is not me, but this is like <laughs> this is what some of us experience being in this portal you know not dressed <laughs> not knowing how to enter the world um stepping out of this uh um this portal of water almost you know um and still guarded and protected. So apparently I'm I'm looking well, I, I seem to go to my left actually. I'm I'm going that direction and I'm looking to my right and seeing this and still going that way. I'm not looking where I'm going. <laughs> and so naturally what's going to happen is that when I cross this frame here, when I when I step outside of it. I'm going to step right into a lion. And <laughs> what happens when you step on a lion? Uh, it so happens that, that this lion um, is looking really friendly and quite flirtatious. You know, it's just, it's flirting with this Taurus and everything is sort of idyllic and, and like paradise in a way. And now it's being stepped upon. It's going to get really, really angry. It's going to get activated. And if we look at this card, you know, the task is, I mean, this is what I'm going to step into doing. Either you get eaten by the lion when it's sort of agitated or activated rather, or it's going to eat somebody else, you know? So, what I'm going to have to do is, how can I put it short? Um, what I'm going to do is sit on this lion, go quickly on top of it, you know, sit on it, grab the mouth, and don't try to make it shut up. Don't try to make it any louder necessarily, but force the mouth to speak the language of me. Um, I have no idea if this makes sense to you, but I mean, if you, if you step out of your comfort zone of, of that which became your comfort zone, where you were protected, more visible, still not heard of, but protected, you know, um, what's going to happen is that you need a voice. And in this image, this figure is not using her own voice. She is using something that used to be very, like, protecting her and flirtatious maybe even and soft and cute as well as a little bit scary in a way. It could become scary, but it looks nice, you know, um, and sacred. Uh, so use what used to be all that in order to let my voice be heard. I'm going to let this lion speak what's on my mind and in my heart.
and that is not an easy task. I mean, it's hard work, isn't it? Um, and it doesn't only it, it it doesn't only apply, I think, to my direct um, connection with other people. Um, it's also in general, a way for me to express myself that I am going to struggle with, um, and I think I have an idea of what it's what it's all about. Um, but so, I mean, that voice is really going to be slightly frightening, isn't it? Um, it's it's going to be much louder than those two guys up here going jibbity jabbity jabbity. <laughs> This one's going to roar, and so it really is going to take some time to deal with my voice. And I mean, while I do that, it's it's really okay to just be... Uh, to, to get dressed, I mean. <laughs> Even though it might feel as though I am just disguising uh, myself as an, as normal, you know. But that's that's okay, and I do have things here, you know. That there are things here to trade. You know, you can trade this one for a hat, just like this guy. You know, and then you can trade that one for a dress, um, like this. This figure has a dress, you know. So it's just the reversed colours, and you, you can do stuff, you know, to make things work in the world, um, whilst also knowing what it's like to be naked. Naked in the dark or naked in the light. I mean, yeah, I can do that. Um, just to sum up, I um, it's it's going to be hard work to get out more and uh, start a bit of more social social life again and. There are clearly, of course, reasons as to why I, I feel reluctant to do it because it's it's going to be hard work and I feel I have to sort of translate myself through this lion but it's it's really, I mean, I feel sort of optimistic when I see this image and you know, when I look at it in this, in this way and, and it does, it does move me, move me and I'm going to be um, <clears throat> thinking about this <clears throat> for some time. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, and please know that I, I, I didn't just, you know, say all these things like live. I was really, I was spending some time with the images and the rows columns and the you know and trying to to see if this works or doesn't work and um, until something um, until something uh, sort of made sense in a way um, but it's not I mean I don't feel that there is some sort of clear um, sense or meaning now in my life you know it's not like a revelation <laughs> but what happens is that that this poetic way of of creating messages and movements animations really feels great i have to say and inspiring and um uh, yeah, so I, I think I'm just going to um, to uh, to stop, and <laughs> I hope that this was inspiring somehow, um, and that maybe you can be inspired to just throw yourself into it and try try to read in in, in a different way than you've been used to. Um, well, I think it was quite fun and. Uh, tough and uh, touched me. So, take care.